Hello everyone. Uh, from a few requests I got from the other video on Illustrator halftone effect tutorial, I uh, decided to make this one in English. So please bear with me. Uh, I've been doing these tutorials for a while now, but all of them have been in Portuguese. Uh, this is the first time I'm doing uh, English spoken tutorial, so please bear with me. I try to keep it quick. So let's jump right in. The uh, halftone effect is something that comes from uh, the print world, so uh, it has to do with the dots that come out of the printer and the effect it gives when you look at a, a print uh, graphic material uh, from close up. You can, you can actually see the dots that came out of the printer that when you look at it from a distance uh, they, they kind of optically blend together to, f to form different colors because uh, they're only, they are only made up of four basic colors, the cyan, magenta, yellow and black. So uh, when you look at it close up or you can somehow blow up the, uh, the image you can see the dots and that's pretty much what, what they call a half tone effect. So we're going to do that in, in Illustrator without having to open Photoshop. I think that's the most important thing. Uh, this effect, you can do it entirely inside Illustrator without having to uh, go port from Illustrator to Photoshop, uh, do the effect and, and, and go back to Illustrator. So uh, I'm going to start with a shape, basic shape here, just to use an, as an example. Uh, but the best results you get from when you have some kind of uh, color nuance or tone nuance like a gradient for example if if you if you apply the effect on a solid color like this it's going to look pretty boring like a it's going to look basically look going to look like a uh, a regular grid of dots so that's that's not what we want we want something more interesting so i'm just going to apply a simple gradient here on the gradient panel select the radial gradient from black to white and what we're going to get here is uh, when we apply the effect the dots where it's black are going to be larger and the dots where it's white are going to be smaller so uh, we can go to object no actually <laughs> we can go to effect pixelate color halftone so this is a photoshop effect as you can see here in the group photoshop effect pixelate color halftone and it brings up this window here I'm going to click default just to get the default values the default values are the max radius is 8 so this means that the largest dot the ones that are on the black the darker areas are going to be the largest dots and they're going to have uh, at most 8 pixels in diameter so that's what this setting means and uh, these individual degrees mean uh, when when you think about the print uh, when the printed material comes out each color comes out at, at a different angle the dots come out at different angles so that uh, if they all came out at the same angle they would always line up um, every dot would be on top of each other and you wouldn't have that uh, the, the blending of colors effect to create other, other colors so uh, these values actually come from uh, default printer uh, individual colors that come out of the printer so this would be uh, cyan, magenta, yellow and black for example so cyan would come out at 108 degrees uh, magenta would come out at 162 degrees and so on so by having those different degrees uh, the dots actually never line up with each other so you can have that optical blending of the colors. So I'm going to keep that just to see how it looks. I'm uh, going to hit OK and there you go. So we have this quite dense looking uh, effect here of the dots at, and if you look closely um, you can actually see the angles like magenta is coming out at this angle and cyan is coming out at this angle and yellow is coming out at this angle those are the angles that we had set up uh, in that previous little window that popped up. So actually I want to have these uh, dots a little bit larger so we don't have to uh, you know command Z go back and apply the effect again. The effect is a uh, it's a non-destructive effect so it goes into the appearance panel right here I have it up here 
if you don't have the appearance panel, just go to Window, um, Appearance, there, Shift, uh, Shift F6, there. So uh, as you can see, you selected the object, and there you have the color, uh, the color halftone effect in the stack. If you want to hide it, you can see that the original gradient is still there. It just applies that effect and on top and just recalculates the effect every time you, you know, tell it to show or hide. And uh, if we want to change anything, just click there. I want to put like, I don't know, 40 pixels is the maximum radius. So hit OK. And there's something more interesting that we can work with. And uh, when I thought about the uh, halftone effect, I thought I, I actually thought about it as being a grid, a regular grid of dots that get larger where it's darker and get and get smaller where it's lighter. So if we go back and set the degrees to be all the same, you can see what happens. Okay, there you go. So actually, it's it's like uh, the magenta, the cyan, and the yellow dots are all you know lined up making the dots black so that's pretty much what I wanted and uh, if we zoom in you can actually see it's 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 kind of pixelated because this is a raster effect it's a Photoshop effect all these effects here are raster effects they come from Photoshop so that you don't have to open Photoshop apply them and go back to Illustrator so uh, what you have to do is uh, work with bitmap inside Illustrator you have to think about uh, the quality of your image uh, as opposed to working with vectors, they don't have to worry about that too much. Um, in this case, if we want to have a decent amount of detail uh, when we turn this into a vector, we should uh, make it bigger or we should increase the resolution of the file, the document. And uh, if we can do that, go into Effect, Document, Raster Effect Settings. These are the settings for all the raster effects in the document. So we open that. I already have it uh, to 300 dpi, or ppi, points per inch. It's a uh, default resolution for print material, so that's uh, that's pretty high. It's pretty high enough. But you might have it at 72. If you if you put it at 72, uh, let me just rerun this color halftone. If we put it at 72, you can really see the the pixels there coming up. So if we if you had it at 72 pixels. Uh, PPI, you can just go back here, uh, set it to high, it's going to recalculate everything. And uh, because we had the uh, the radius set at, uh, I think it was 30 or 40 or something, uh, it recalculated the resolution of the file, so um, the dots, the maximum radius is still that one that we set there, but now because the resolution is higher, you can have more pix more pixels in the same amount of space that we had before so the dots look smaller so just to fix that we go to color halftone it's going to recalculate that and just hit OK and the dots are going to come back as they were before and we have a larger resolution we have a better resolution there I mean you can obviously you can zoom in to this far enough and you'll always see pixels but for what we need now, this looks fine. So, so what we have here is uh, this is still a vector object, as you um, it's it says up here path. It's still a path with a gradient fill and a color halftone effect applied on it. And because the color halftone is a bitmap bitmap effect, when we expand this, it's going to turn into a bitmap image. So we go to object expand appearance there and because we had that uh, bitmap effect in the middle of the stack uh, the way it did the, ex the expansion the only way it, it knew how to do it was to convert it to an image because uh, Illustrator never it never in the process it never created these dots in vector they always they always created in bitmap so the only the only way for him to do that is to convert it into an into an image, a flat image. So we do that again. Expand appearance. I just went back and just did it again. Don't have to do it twice. So now you can see it's an image. It's embedded because it was created on fly right now. And here's a resolution 300 dpi. That's pretty good. 
and now you can see in the in the appearance panel it's just an image uh, all the, the that that stack that we had with fill and stroke and the the effect are gone it's just one plain image if you put control y or command y you can see it's just a plain image there embedded so from this we can turn it into a vector by live tracing it and because it's an image you can select it go up here live trace tracing may proceed slowly uh, okay it's, it's just considering the, the image quite large so it's gonna you know it's telling me oh it's gonna take a while for me to do this it didn't really take a while it's already done it you can see now it's it's vector but the default values uh, give some pretty dodgy results as you can see here they're not really circles so we can adjust that by coming into I'm actually going to zoom in these guys here and uh, the tracing options dialog open it with this little button it's going to open this guy and the main parameter we're looking at is the path fitting the default is two pixels I'm going to just change it to one hit preview it's going to trace it again and you can see those uh, circles look more like circles. They're not going to look perfect because uh, in the original image, this is this, these dots were quite low resolution already, so uh, it doesn't really know that they're circles. It just made a guess. The best guess it made uh, with these parameters was to give me this kind of shape here. So uh, I'll just I can just hit trace right now. For me, this works. I can actually uh, check ignore white right here and what that does is everything that's white in the image it just ignores and it's going to be transparent there's, got, there's not going to be any shape there so that's good for me I'll just trace it and still we have one more step which is to if I'm already glad with this this is looking pretty good for me I can just hit expand right here and now finally we have a vector uh, color halftone again it's not perfect because it's resolution dependent and uh, if you want if you want to adjust that if, if you want like perfect circles uh, you can go back and bump up the uh, the resolution for the file or make make the image bigger uh, whatever you need to uh, get the highest resolution you need to uh, when you live trace it it um, it looks the way you want it. So that's pretty much how you get a vector halftone. It, the basic rule is you need a, vec um, a bitmap image and then you live trace it with the parameters. So you can create a, a bitmap image in Illustrator from pretty much everything. I mean, uh, if I don't make a, a blend object, here, select these guys, uh, Option Command B for blend and uh, we can apply the effect color half tones already here okay whatever no oh, actually color half tone let's put those 40 pixels equal degrees there and now if I want to um, just a second there okay if I want to transform this into a vector um, halftone, it's the same process. Just, just the same. Diff the, the only difference is instead of going to expand appearance, we go to rasterize. We can go to rasterize as well. We can rasterize this. Uh, set the resolution right here. Okay, it's going to rasterize. Okay, so now this is an image as you can see here, and then you just hit live trace again. You can adjust these guys. Um, just one thing: the minimum area is uh, it, it's telling like what's the, the smallest object that can come out of this uh, this tracing. So if we put like this check preview, if we put like 80 pixels or more, perhaps I don't know 200 pixels. So the the smallest object is gonna have is gonna be this big. So the the smallest dots here that are smaller than this size, I don't know if this is a uh, area or whatever, they're not going to be traced. So they're going to be ignored. 
So if we put something smaller like that, it's going to consider the smaller ones. If I put something like, I don't know, 500 pixels, everything that's, uh, every object that's smaller than 500 is going to be ignored. It's not going to be traced. So you get, you can get that, that much control over it. I'll just leave it at 10 so it can, you know, keep the little details and trace it. And again, did I check this? Ignore white, trace, expand, and there you go. And uh, that's pretty much it. I think that covers it. Um, I hope this helped everyone. If you have any questions or comments, please comment below. Um, if you have any suggestions for future tutorials as well, I'll be uh, I'll evaluate if if I can make them in English. Uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks.